In today's show video, we're gonna take a look at the newest world champion in Khalil Mohammed Light, who won the second world championship. So today's show video, kind of taking a look at why he is the best by far in the business right now, and how he played with Riley in the Khalil League World Finals. In case you guys don't want to miss any Khalil content just like that, make subscribe and also make sure, of course, use Creative Mode and Shop in case you guys want to buy the pass next season. I really appreciate that. And we're gonna see here. The first game was Wiley, which was actually in the upper bracket final. Whoever wins this game is going to be in the final. And then later on, they're matching up again. So, honestly, World Finals. Let me know what you guys think about that. I casted every single game in German. I watched every single game. Um, not going to lie, I felt a bit underwhelming. Not because, like, Mo played bad or anybody played bad. Mo played absolutely amazing. Um, he played absolutely, absolutely amazing. Especially in this matchup, which is really, really tough on paper with the opponents. The Magic Archer, really cheap cycle lock and so on. So, this is like a matchup where I thought, okay, this is not easy, but Mo played this so, 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 so well. I just felt like overall with eight players, it feels like way too less. In my opinion, maybe you guys have a different opinion on that, but I feel like eight players for Clash Royale League World Finals is not really what you want, in my opinion. So, that was like a first big mistake there from Riley, kind of playing a knight into the wrong lane or like in the wrong direction. So, actually, Dark Coven gets a bit of chip and also at the same time, the... Um, the Doctor together with the monster is going to be able to get some chip damage. I feel like the matchup is good for Riley. The, the main problem I feel like in this matchup is that Mo got the um, Gottenstein, which makes the matchup harder for Riley. And at the same time, um, at the same time, like the Freakers are of course helping him a lot to out cyclers and so on. He's also doing some mistakes there at the same with this tornado right now, where actually the skeletons are gonna survive. So I feel like this is like kinda the main problem or like the main issue there. So he just plays a really aggressive Dark Oven because he knows he can just pressure because the opponent has to play a lock opposite the lane. Um and he doesn't have like a bomb tower bro. Bomb tower would be way, 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 way better for um for Wily there because it kinda just sits on the ground. It does splash damage, kinda helping against Prince and so on. So in my opinion that would be kinda the better choice there. So Prince in the back there for Mo, just like kind of setting up the first defense. I think it's like one of the first um, Prince's or like defensive Prince. He just goes in for skeletons in case um, Riley plays a minor, but he does not. So mine's gonna come down there on top of the Prince's. He's trying to protect. I don't know if he's gonna be able to. Actually, he misplaced the minor there. Really big misplay from Mo, uh, Riley there. So now the matching is gonna come down and gets like two shots on top of the tower. I've had the really, really good ability there from um, Mo there. So Darkham's gonna go down on the left hand side. He's definitely defending. He goes on for defense mine on the right hand side. He's just gonna go again for the barrel. And I feel like the main problem he kinda rightly had, man, is he's not gonna be really able to kill the princess. He's doing a really good job protecting him. But at the same time, I feel like the main kind of issue for Wiley in this matchup was not able to activate the King Tower early enough to make sure to kind of okay, defend the barrels in an easier way. So once again, he's gonna be able to get some chip damage. Perfect lock there. Cannon cleans up everything. So Mo is just going to be able to kind of get on top of the princess, uh, top of the magic arch immediately. Goes in for skeletons there, man. And look at the princess protection. This is incredible. So once again, going for the golden barrel there, being really, uh, being able to defend this, but he still has to defend the princess because once again, the prince gets some volume. Was going to go for pre lock maybe on top of the um, spears. Wasn't able, so just time for him to go for next princess. So mine is going to come down on the tower for the first time, really like getting some decent amount of chip there. But once again, Dark Golden for Mo does a really, really good job there. So he's going to go for Scorpenstein there. And Tornado isn't really doing a great job against Scorpenstein. This is the main difference between the Scorpenstein and the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie can easily pull, but this is not going to be possible because the monster is so fat, has such a, has such a big ass, bro, that you can't really move it. And this is like what makes it way more diff difficult to kind of nade it in, get a perfect lineup with the Magic Arch. Really good Ice Bird on Riley's on our left hand side, but he still has to get over 1k damage, and that was an absolutely incredible Princess doing a good job. I don't really think it was breaking yet, but it did his job. So this is like the first time, actually, Mo got two Magic Arches on the map, but I think it's fine. He's just going to be able to pop the ability there. Skeletons are going to be coming down to kill the Miner. Once again, High Dark Gloom. They're just doing a good job of killing it immediately. And once again, a Goblin Ball here. Riley needs kind of Miracle to come back into this game. Princess once again. Coming down. And a Magic Archer low there to kind of get this way there. So once again, going in for a really, really good... Um, Goblin Stein there, which you can't tornado, as I said, and he tries to go for Prince and the Bridge, but that was actually a really sm smart play there from Riley to actually get on top of that immediately. So Goblin Barrel once again with the Goblin Stein on the left-hand side, and Evil Barrel, bro, they need to do something with Evil Barrel, it just feels so, 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 so good. So once again, Dark Goblin number two, Princess number two also on the map, 
And Wiley can't really do anything about that, right? He has to go for a lock on the tower. Once again, a Goblin Burger gets damaged. And two princesses on the map, or like three princesses now, one Dart Goblin. And that was absolutely crazily played by uh, Mo. Man, that was... That was class. That was really, really class, bro. Jumping into the next game here immediately from Mo versus Riley. So Mo just plays like a different deck in this game. He plays like a different tower tube. Like you'd normally just see all the plays, all over the place, the Prince Tower. But here Mo actually decided to cook with the Cannon here. So Cannon Tower and together with the Skeleton King. So this actually was the first time you saw a Skeleton King in a Clash Royale League World Finals. Nobody else played it before, which is pretty crazy. If you think about some Mortar, opposite lane. Immediately there from Mo Lai just doing a really good job and also like waiting here. So he has like a cannon card, defense kind of both sides. So look at this now. Mo actually has Zappies, bro. And that was really, really nice because the cannon card actually targets the or like the wizard actually targets the cannon card. Um and not the Zappies. So seeing water seeing like Zappies together with the um cannon card or like together with the small deck is really really crazy to think about. But actually kind of makes sense because Riley also used a ton of Rambiter there. So he's gonna go for this bad stay. He's not gonna support with a mine, he's just gonna chill and relax there. And Riley played a ton of Packers, so that was like one of his signature decks all over the place. So for Packer in the back. Just gonna go minor there for Mo. Just trying to get some early chip there on the right hand side and that's completely fine. Why he's just gonna ignore that? And Mo's just setting up a defensive mortar there all over the place to make sure, okay, we're defending a mortar. So nothing, or like we're defending a packer, and nothing is gonna break through this left hand side, hopefully. So Kenny does a pretty good job there to DPS that down together, especially with the together, especially with this. But he wasn't able to get the king tag Maybe he was hoping for the e-split to actually get on top of the cannon card of the king. Didn't really work out, but it's fine. Cannon card is still alive. And make sure to kind of kill this. So he just goes in for the gang. There he goes in for like arrows. That was a really good arrows. But look at this now. Look at this now. So the Zeppies actually didn't target the Ram Rider, but the Skelly King was so fat, bro, that actually the Ram Rider wasn't able to break through and get the charge on the tower. So <laughs> that was. I wanna say I don't wanna say lucky because it's like an interaction with screen happening, but that was of course really nice. So cannon cut getting like a snipe on top of that, also like a really really good ability there. And look at this cannon cut value, bro. The cannon cut still stays alive now. And look at the Zeppi's reset, making sure the cannon cut actually dies there. So he's gonna be able to get like an evil mortar on top of the brawl, which was absolutely incredible there. And now the cannon cut still goes strong. Look at the cannon cut value. Mine is coming down. Maybe could have mined arrows on top of the stuff there. But look at the elixir. I'm um, widely overspent, so he goes in really aggressive. He, like this is what Mo knows. Like he knows exactly how much elixir the opponent has, and this is like why he's punishing a perfect ability timing now. Defensive Ram Rider, and this is the pressure. He goes in like for left hand side, rage there. Look at this Ram Rider, all going over the place. He has to go arrows, but he missed the two, uh, the three bats. So he can just go for another uh, mortar there and just keep up the pressure. This is what Mo does so well. He knows the exact cycle of the pawn, he knows the exact elixir of the pawn. And knowing this at home, right, you can always look at like a second screen where you see the elixir from the pawn and so on. It's always easy, right? But doing this in the Clash League World Finals, where there's like so much pressure on the board, it's actually incredible. So once again, going for the Goblin Gang there. Which is gonna come down from Mo, I mean from from Riley, but this is like already in place, right? There has to be a miracle happening for Mo to still lose this game. So let's see, he's actually gonna go in for the bad stair, kind of support the cannon card, and just goes in for defensive mortar there. The Royal goes doing a really good job once again going for pack on the back, and Mo decides to actually pressure opposite lane. Even the other tower, the other tower still has like a ton of HP, so he goes in like also for minor there. To kind of predict the wizard, so he has to go for an arrows there. At least he forced out quite some elixir and got so much damage. It's like not gonna be close to tower now, but still so much damage. Just gonna go some four bats there. And Riley misplaced the rage, and that was huge, bro. He misplaced the rage. Oh man, that that that's bad, bro. But also the cannon cuts the waves there. Ghosts out, so you can just go and also for a goblin game behind this and the. Uh, arrows are gonna come down, take out the wizards over really, really nice. Bats are gonna come down. The Zeppies are going to do a really good job, and Miner once again in the back there, but this time he gets the Packer in the right time, but once again forcing out arrows there, and he just goes an evil more to obviously lane because he knows he can actually pressure him that well. And the ability, maybe the evil mortar wasn't the best evil mortar, not gonna lie, he kind of overcommitted there. That was like the first mistake I kind of saw in this whole game, just kind of like going wasting your boy there. So he has to go for mine. That was actually a really, really good miner, making sure to kind of get the stuff in front there. So he still has to kind of go now for his cannon card there. And that was actually getting a bit scary in my opinion because of the... 
because of the like evil wizard plus evil packer push but man look at the zappies they're just staying alive so 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 long this game is over ggs well played with this game more actually was in the final why he had to battle out against lucas x game which he was able to win and now we're gonna see the final game Going into the final here, Lucas X Gamer just lost against Riley 2 1. Was an absolutely incredible game. But now we're going to take a look at the rematch from Riley versus Mo. And honestly, that's an interesting matchup because I saw some people were actually saying this is a really good matchup for Royal Giant. Um, not sure about that, bro. The thing is, like, the thing is, like, kind of putting matchups based on Mo Light is hard because he actually won this matchup. That was actually the first matchup in the CL World Final. Seeing RG Monk. Was this Queen Piggy cycle leg? So that was the first matchup actually in the Clash of League World Finals. Elsia played Piggies. I mean, Elsia played Warrior Giant. Mo played Piggies. And he beat um, Elsia in this matchup from the Piggies perspective. But now Mo actually plays Warrior Giant and Riley plays Piggies. And you guys are gonna see he's once again winning it also from other perspectives. So that's just like means he is better than anyone in this entire game. So that was a really, really good defense from Riley though. Mo didn't decide to go Monk early on, just like Cycling as Warrior Giant. I think it's like what you have to do with this matchup. Just gonna go for your Warrior Giants in the bag and getting as much value as you can. So Piggy's just gonna get split. Guards on this one side and Monk on the other side. So overall, really, really nice defense. Also like gonna spend any Q there from Riley, which I think was maybe a bit too over aggressive because now Mo can actually easily go now for his Royal Giant in the bag behind this Monk if he decides to do so. So he does, he does. So he's just going to go for his ability there. And he's also can go now for a lock as soon as he has the elixir. So you guys are going to see it's going to be a really, really good defense. The cannon comes down really late though. But defense that because Evolution Icebird carried him so far. So good. Riley has like the advantage there. Evolution Skulls plus Evolution Icebird, man. Man, Evolution Icebird and Evolution Skulls are just so good. I just kind of doing what they should. So good. Evolution Icebird together there. We're together with the Fireball. Making sure there's not going to be any damage. It's a 5 for 5 trade. So I guess fine for both sides. So... I guess now Mo is just going to decide to go in for his Warrior Giant once again in the back soon whenever he has it. And I guess like EQ is going to come down there. Monk is firstly coming down. Okay, he decides to go Monk left hand side and Queen is going to come down there. So here this game he decides to go in for his Warrior Giant immediately in the back. Kind of blocking the right hand side which is always nice. Like that was really smart because he's going to go Ice Wars to the right, right? To block the lane so he can't really go Hoggis there. He just decides to pop the ability. Immediately the Ice Wars is going to come down just in case he decides to go for something. And a Fireball immediately is going to come down there. So really good ability there. But now he's like a second Warrior Giant. I think this is what Elsiop didn't do right in this matchup against Mo Light. He wasn't able to cycle his Warrior Giant as quick as Mo is. Maybe the Evolution Ice Split could have come a bit earlier. One second earlier. And he could have been able to defend it a bit better. So Scans are going to come down. Ice Wars does a pretty good job of killing everything. And now actually Mo has a really good situation. So Fireball is going to come down. He also has to play Guards. He doesn't want to take too much damage. And it's actually going to be a perfect defense there for Mo once again. I don't know how often I said this weekend or like by watching this game that he did a perfect defense. But I think it has to be at least like more than few times. So honestly just going to go Queen again in the back there against the Monk. Which is always like I don't know man. I just feel like he feels like he kind of has to do it because if you do it like opposite lane, he can just get a monk off the cannon. But bro, this defense, man. Look at this freaking defense, bro, from fucking Mo Light. That was crazy. Evolution Icebird, uh, Evolution Icebird, Icebird defend Roadhogs flawless, man. That was so satisfying to watch. So Evolution Icebird is going to come down. Mo has to wait a lot. Now he has to go for a late fireball. But look at the two Royal Giants actually getting on the board. Really perfect Icebird, man. Perfect, 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 perfect. And at the end, it was also perfect. So look at this. So the, the, the ice would decide to go to the right-hand side, not to the left-hand side. So he actually gets on tower immediately. And that's going to be so much damage. Once again, going for a monk there just to kind of set up in case he goes in. And Mo already knows kind of this is going to be it, right? He can just basically fireball side. He log first. Now he's just going to pop the ability. Fireball is going to come down. So he could try to go opposite lane. But he knows that, like, Mo knows he's going to go EQ lock there together on top of that. But he has the fireball cycle back 1 0. And he's one game away from being Clash Royale League World Champion for the second time. Next game up here, we see Mo like using the Revolution Cage to get off the bomber. And Wiley plays here Balloon. Probably, right? Lumberjack Balloon. So. Mo plays like a different mind. Like he actually has the goblins also in there. So really good flying machine there on defense. Now he just decides to go in there because he didn't. I don't know why he decided to be that aggressive. Because it's just like Mo, right? He saw like, okay, Electric doesn't have enough elixir for Packers. So that's why he went aggressive. And that's what Mo does, right? He is like the best player when it's about punishing, knowing cycles, knowing elixir. 
I know, a ton of, a ton of the players would just like let the bomber go. No, Mo decides to go and force Goblin in front of this, baiting on Elixir and at the end. He's the guy with an Elixir advantage now, and this is why he decides to go Lava Hound. He generates a pulse of Elixir. These are like the small things, right? So, such a small things. And now look at this, bro. He goes and force Cage High, making sure to kind of get it on top of the Llama Jack, and now the Balloon. It's not really getting too much volume. Also at the same time, the also at the same time, bro, the rage isn't really doing anything there. So he's gonna go for a flying machine, and this is so, bro. This are like man, that was so good. That was so goated. And now look at this, bro. So he's just gonna chill there. He's just gonna go for this. And now we're just gonna go arrows here, and the arrows also hit the ice with that, so it means the flying machine stays alive with one HP. And here he kind of knows it's basically over, bro. Small place. Few decisions which won him the game in the first two minutes, bro. It gets boring, bro, at this point. And I don't know what the fucking hap heck here happened, bro, because the game wasn't over yet. So I don't know why they decided to do that. And this is also why uh, Mo or like Riley leaked kind of elixir. And you guys will see later. This is kind of really important. So he was like leaking like three elixir or like 2.7 elixir, which is kind of costing him maybe the game. Because, like, I mean, to be fair, it's not that easy for Mo to defend like this big. Um, evil Packer, Evil Electro Dragon decks, uh, like pushes, right? You know, um, this is not gonna be an easy task for him. So he has to go now for his Electro Dragon. So it was a really, really good, once again, really smart Goblin play. Tries to get as much volume as he can. Really, really good tornado there, though, from Riley. Maybe making able to sure to kind of kill that, but he can still go for a freeze now, which he's most likely just gonna do there. Okay, not yet. But I think he's now just gonna pop the freeze there. And it was a really good freeze because now with the help of the rage, Lama Jack is gonna be able to kind of help this. And the balloon gets like one shot off the tower and now gets a second shot. Maybe with the two elixir like, more, he could have been able to apply more pressure there. But it was also a really good evolution more. Maybe, yeah, of course he would have also gotten a second tower. But you know, still I think I was really annoying, really embarrassing from the production. And also really, yeah, uh, this, this, this can't happen, bro, if it's about world finance. Now he's gonna get the block there with the cage in case the gets on tower, but overall, it's GG's, well played, Mohamed Light is the champion of the world in 2024, overall, I felt like the Vokasha League World Finals, they were a bit underwhelming, not gameplay-wise, but I feel like overall, 8 players, it wasn't like too much, I know, bro, it wasn't, it wasn't like, how, how should I say it there, but like, the, the games were like, not too long, bro, you were just like, 2 hours each day, I felt like it was not entertaining enough, um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. I'm going to be back for next year, by the way, because there's some people are asking, are you retiring? Are you stopping? No, bro. I'm hopefully going to be back on stage next year because I feel like, man, Clash League World Finals need me. So I will be back next year. See you guys soon for our next video. Thank you so guys for all the messages. And yeah, we got our deserved CL World Finals champion. Molite played absolutely amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed this special video. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to use Kringle Mall in the shop. I'm going to be out. Thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow for the next Clash Royale episode, guys. Goodbye.